、えー、すっぽりとかぶりまして、えー、一橋容疑者、現在、えー、今ですね、新幹線を降りてきました、えー、すごいフラッシュの中、えー、一橋容疑者が今。This is the arrest footage of Tatsuya Ichihashi, a man who evaded police custody for over two years for the murder of Lindsay Hawker, an English teacher who was living in Tokyo at the time. While on the run, Tatsuya would go to the extreme to conceal his identity and evade capture, even going so far as to perform plastic surgery on his own face. By the time of his capture, he was one of Japan's most wanted criminals. But what led up to these events? Who was the victim? And how was he ultimately caught? What's going on guys? Welcome back to a new video. If you guys enjoy true crime stories, then be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you're new. With that being said, grab a coffee or a snack and get comfortable. This is the twisted case of Tatsuya Ichihashi. Before this harrowing story begins, we need to talk about the victim. Lindsay Hawker was born to Bill and Julia Hawker. They lived in Coventry, England, originally moving from Brandon, Warwickshire, a village just outside of Coventry. While in school, Lindsay studied biology at the University of Leeds, where she graduated with a first-class honors degree in 2006. While she did intend to pursue a master's degree after completing her bachelor's, Lindsay ultimately realized that she wanted to do something exciting before she went back to academia. This led her to taking on an English teaching position in Japan during October of that year. Little did the 22-year-old know that this expedition and journey across the world would end in tragedy. Tetsuya Ichihashi was born in Gifu Prefecture on January 5, 1979. His father was a doctor and mother a dentist. This naturally put pressure on Tatsuya while he was growing up, as he was surrounded by a successful family. While growing up, Tatsuya ultimately failed to meet his family's expectations as well as his own, failing exams that would further his career. Tatsuya ultimately settled with a degree in horticulture from Chiba University in 2005, this being when Tatsuya was already 26 years of age. Upon graduation, Tatsuya unfortunately did not have luck finding a job. Whether this was because he chose not to try or he had legitimate trouble holding down work, Tatsuya ultimately lived off an allowance of 100,000 yen per month from his family. That's roughly about 750 US dollars at the time. Police would describe Tetsuya as a loner with an obsession for physical fitness. He regularly worked out at the gym and cycled roughly 25 kilometers a day. While this might not be such a bad thing, police would also go on to report that he had an interest in violent manga, which some would say attributed to the case. With this kind of background, do you think it provides any insight into the mind of Tetsuya Ichihashi? Do you think it played a part in his actions, and if so, how? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Now before we go any further, I know cases like this can make your blood boil and even make you start sweating because of how crazy they get. Sometimes I feel like I need a shower after making these videos. But that's why I'm pleased to tell you about today's sponsor, Native, an aluminum-free deodorant that I've honestly fallen in love with. Unlike other deodorants, Native just feels good on the body. It's not sticky and it dries quickly. Not to mention it has other simple and familiar ingredients such as coconut oil and shea butter. And aside from being aluminum-free, Native offers plastic-free packaging and its ingredients are cruelty and vegan Free. But what I really like about Native is not just the wide variety of scents, but even after a whole day of moving around or exercising, it stays with you, even providing you with up to 72 hours of odor protection. Like, I've been out all day and I still smell divine. I personally fall in love with the cashmere and rain scent as it just smells so good and refreshing. But if I feel like I want to switch things up, you can't go wrong with coconut and vanilla or even lavender and rose. They all smell amazing and they'll definitely give you that fresh feeling that'll last you all day. And for a limited time, you can embrace the magic of autumn with Native's Cabin Collection. Perfect for those nights around a campfire, apple picking, or curling up by the fire, you can enjoy scents like wildwood and cardamom, warm cider and cinnamon, and of course, you already know my personal favorite cashmere and rain. They're only available during the fall, so get them while you can. And if you end up liking Native that much and you want even more, well, guess what? They also offer body washes and toothpastes. And I can tell you right now, they're just as good as their deodorants. My whole bathroom might just end up filled with Native at this point. Now, three deodorants would be $39 normally, but if you use my link in code TerryTV, you can get them for $26. That's over 33% off. Also, with my code, you can get 20% off any toothpaste or body wash. Once again, that's code TerryTV to save 33%. And now... Let's get back to the crime. Lindsay met Tatsuya on March 20th, 2007, while she was riding her bike home from work. You are my English teacher, a man said while Lindsay was unlocking her bike getting ready to ride home. She turned around to see Tatsuya standing there. It was an uncomfortable situation to say the least, and it only got worse. She told Tatsuya that he had her mistaken for someone else, because she clearly didn't know the 20-year-old Japanese native. Lindsay then got on her bike and continued on her way. 
but it wasn't long before she realized that Tatsuya was in fact following from behind. As she picked up speed on her bike, she realized that Tatsuya's brisk walk had now turned into a jog as he matched her speed to maintain his pursuit. This should be a clear red flag for anyone in similar situations. The fact that Tatsuya approached Lindsay from behind and mistook her for his English teacher is believable to some extent, but there's no excuse to chase somebody down while they're riding their bike home. Even in places like Japan where the overall rate of crime is low by most standards, you can never be too careful when dealing with people you don't know. Upon arriving in front of her apartment, Tatsuya asked Lindsay for a glass of water. Lindsay, being the kind-hearted person that she was, felt bad for him at the time, and she agreed to let him in for a glass of water, but not before showing him that she shared her apartment with her two roommates. Lindsay was a smart young woman, and she did this to establish boundaries as well as show her roommates what Tatsuya looked like just as a precaution. While inside, Tatsuya proposed that Lindsay give him private English lessons for a handsome rate, but Lindsay ultimately refused the offer. Before he left, Tatsuya drew a picture of Lindsay on a scrap of paper and signed it with his name, number, and email address in the hopes that she would contact him in the future. Lindsay thought again about the proposal, and in her eyes, Tatsuya had given himself a better first impression than earlier before. Ultimately, she decided to take him up on his offer, and the two then made plans to meet for an English lesson four days later. Lindsay and Tatsuya met in a cafe for their lesson. You can see in the CCTV footage the two standing in line for their beverages. They conversed in their lesson for about an hour. All seemed to be going well, but by the end of the lesson, Tatsuya checked for his wallet and told Lindsay he had forgotten it at home. Don't worry, he said. My apartment is close by. Why don't you stop by and I can pay you then? This is another red flag from Tatsuya. You see, it's one thing to forget your cash at a cash-only lesson, but it's something else to invite that person into your home in order to get the money. There are ATMs, there are bank transfers, or if you so choose, you can go into your home and bring the money out. But there's no need to invite somebody into your place of living when they should have already been paid to begin with. Lindsay and Tatsuya took a taxi to his apartment. Before heading inside, Lindsay asked the driver to wait a few minutes for her return while she was getting the money from Tatsuya. But several minutes did pass by. In fact, seven minutes had gone by, and she had still not come out. The sad reality of the situation, though, is that Lindsay would never come out of Tatsuya's apartment alive. The taxi driver, after waiting, figured that his service was simply no longer required, and he drove off to go back to work. Now, Lindsay had classes to teach at her school later that day, and after she failed to show up to work as well as return home to her roommates, people were already starting to suspect something had happened. Two days later, her friends, after not seeing or hearing from her, called the police. It wasn't hard to point the blame at Tatsuya. After all, her roommates already were likely aware that she had made plans to meet him that day. But what made it even easier to track him down was the little scrap of paper he left at her apartment, detailing his contact info. It wasn't long before two police officers were dispatched to Tatsuya's apartment around 5.40 p.m. However, without enough evidence, all they could do was knock. At first, it seemed like no one was home. All the lights were off and there was no sign anyone was there. However, police caught sight of a faint shadow moving inside. The two officers called for backup, and about an hour later, seven more officers showed up. While the officers were dispersed around the general area, Tatsuya, who was already aware the police were onto him, snuck out of his apartment. Barefoot, with just a rucksack on his back, he tried to sneak past the authorities. But while trying to sneak by, he bumped into one officer. Tatsuya immediately tried to flee, but the officer grabbed his rucksack, forcing Tatsuya to leave it behind. Now, Tatsuya's apartment was on the fourth floor, and there were only two officers up there at this time. But for some strange reason, none of the officers had radios with them. So when Tetsuya snuck out and evaded the officers on the fourth floor, they had no way to alert the officers on the ground floor. Tetsuya was then able to escape into the night, leaving only his rucksack with his gym clothes in it behind. Shortly after Tetsuya's disappearance, police would then search his residence, and there they would find Lindsay's body. Buried in his detachable bathtub that he had moved onto his balcony, Tetsuya had buried her using mostly soil and decomposing agents, which he most likely had access to as a horticulture student. During examination, it was discovered that Lindsay's body was bound and gagged, with bruises along her face and upper torso. It was clear that something horrible had taken place. Along with the body, Lindsay's possessions were scattered across Tetsuya's room, with no clear intent to hide them. The fact that Tetsuya attempted to hide the body but not Lindsay's possessions indicates that he hadn't thought out this plan very clearly, let alone the fact that he left his contact information with her and her roommates. Due to this, it can be said that perhaps this crime wasn't 100% planned. However, none of that matters in the end, because Lindsay was still taken from this world, and Tatsuya was nowhere to be found. 
Further investigation would find that Tatsuya had a number of wigs in his apartment. For purposes yet unknown, police would take this into consideration during their search. And instead of releasing regular images of Tatsuya, they would also post photoshopped images of him in wigs, just in the case that he was using this method of disguise. However, despite the amount of images that were posted, along with the dead ends that police ended up at, Tatsuya was still nowhere to be found. The days turned into weeks, the weeks turned into months, and the months eventually turned into years. As the time that Tatsuya was at large grew, so did the discouragement of Lindsay's family. They were becoming impatient with the Japanese police that weren't able to locate their daughter's killer. In fact, Lindsay's family eventually even flew to Japan to join the search and push any leads they could to find justice. Lindsay's father Bill even went so far as to meet Yakuza members, or the Japanese mob, to help them in their search. In exchange for their help, Bill offered them two bottles of whiskey. This just goes to show the lengths that the family was willing to go to to find their daughter's killer. On November 10th, 2009, Tatsuya was finally captured in Osaka, where he was attempting to board a ferry to Okinawa. The police had received a tip on where he was and where he might be going, and when they stopped him and asked him what his name was, he openly admitted that he was in fact Tatsuya Ichihashi. While in custody, Tatsuya would detail his life on the run as well as confessing to his crimes. He would go on to say that during his time evading the authorities, he traveled all across Japan, even staying on remote islands at times to evade capture. When he wasn't traveling from island to island, he would stay at PC cafes overnight. He avoided eye contact with mostly everyone and paid close attention to CCTV. And for work, he would take up mostly construction jobs that would pay cash only. Tetsuya was able to save up a decent amount of money during this time, roughly 1 million yen, or 12,000 USD. But because of the Japanese police's continuing effort to find him, even going so far as to raise the initial reward money from 1 million yen to 10 million yen, Tetsuya knew that he would have to change more than just his clothes and his locations. And so, most of the money that he saved was spent on two plastic surgery operations. One to raise his nose bridge and another to acquire a longer, narrower nose. However, this was Tetsuya's fatal mistake. Before he got professional plastic surgery from a clinic, Tetsuya actually performed his own procedures on himself. This included cutting out two of his moles, sewing a thread through his nose to change its shape, and cutting a piece of his lower lip off to make it appear thinner. Because the reward money during this time was at an all-time high, many people were made aware of Tatsuya, and one of those people happened to be the surgeon who performed his latest surgery. The medical professional quickly sent the before and after photos to police, who quickly released them to the public. This plan worked really well, because aside from the surgeon who recognized him, now one of Tatsuya's construction co-workers also figured out who he was and alerted the authorities. This sent Tatsuya into a flight of panic, and he once again attempted to do what he had been doing over the last two years. Tetsuya attempted to flee and board a ferry to Okinawa, but thanks to the newly released images, a ferry worker spotted him and quickly alerted the authorities, where he was stopped and finally captured. The search was finally over. Lindsay's killer had finally been caught, and her family could finally take a deep breath. But it wasn't over just yet. During the trial, Tetsuya would admit to murdering and raping Lindsay, as well as covering up the body. There was no denying what he had done. For this, Lindsay's family pushed for the death penalty, However, due to Japan's stance on the matter, they seldom give out the death penalty to people that have only committed a single murder. Therefore, Tatsuya was ultimately sentenced to life in prison for his crimes, at the age of 32. I wish the best for the Hawker family. May they finally have peace after years of torment while searching for their daughter's killer. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and had something to take away from it. See you guys in the next video. Until next time, good night.